Hey everyone, welcome back to another edition of Hanging with Hannah at BU. This week I'm joined by Gabby Mora. She's a junior on the track and field team studying biology. But when she's not training, she spends her time developing her Instagram, where she's amassed a following of over 10K. We're going to be talking a little bit about how she got started and where she plans to go in the future. Stay tuned. So Gabby, tell me a little bit about your journey to becoming an influencer and how you got started and your goal eventually. Okay, so basically I live in Florida. That's where I'm from. I come here for college and I was always taking tons of pictures, going to the beach, doing things, posting everything. Like I kind of like just kept like a chapter book of everything that I enjoyed doing. And I guess some brands kind of like looked at that and I got some brands, like pretty good ones, reaching out to me and they're like, hey, like you fit the exact description we'd like for someone to like represent what we do. Like we like your vibe, we like how you post certain things. Like, would you like to join our team? And that started happening mostly this summer when it started taking off. And I started like, you know, taking those opportunities, taking the risk because I still like run track here and I'm a biology major. So it takes up a good bit of my time. But I basically like went out on that limb and I took it and it started helping my following and like uh, my engagement and a lot of other things. So I was kind of like, you know what, I'll do this. Like I have a pretty outgoing personality. So I was like, okay, I'll try it out. And it, I, I've just been going on from there. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. So usually do brands reach out to you or do you, have you started to reach out to them? Or how does that yeah. usually work? Okay. So a couple brands have reached out to me, but um, one of the biggest brands I work with right now is Hooters. And I had this one like manager from my media company reach out to me and they're like, hey, fill out this like questionnaire, this application. We think you'd be a good fit for this mm -hmm. and you'll like hear back from them. And if you fit their criteria, you'll be able to do it. So that one was more so me going out of my way to do it. And I kind of like liked that opportunity. But other brands that I work with, like Celsius, Liquid IV, like some clothing and bikini brands, they reach out to me or like they'll have someone off their team DM me. Mm -hmm. And then like I work through them through my email and then I have a manager who like kind of manages all the things that I do because it's pretty like, you know, difficult to do it by myself and you can get caught up in a bunch of different things if you're not really reading the fine print as yeah. closely as you should. Yeah. So I would say there's a good mix of me, uh, you know, doing it on my own, reaching out to brands that I'd like to work with and then a lot of brands that reach out to me and like, you know, I'll choose like, oh, will this get me money out of it? Like, will I get some cool benefits out of it? Will it be a cool experience? And that's kind of how I sort through who I'd want to work with and who I'm able to work with. That's really, really cool. So yes. um, <clears throat> you work with like a management team yes. or you like sign with somebody as a kind of like an yes. agency sort so of? Yes, so I work with an agency. They're called ME3 Digital. They're located out of Orlando, Florida. It's a woman-led um, you know, agency and they're really, really helpful. They kind of stay on top of me mm -hmm. and keep me in line in terms of what I'm doing, who I'm working with, certain things like that. And I think it's a super, super big help. They specifically help me with my partnership with Hooters. So that's really, really helpful because, you know, I'm like only 20 years old. It's so easy to get, you know, like gypped in terms of like, like I said, fine print and other things. So it's really helpful to work with people who like, you know, have my best interests at heart. That's great that you found a partner to do that with because I can imagine that would be right. really stressful to do yes, all by yourself. Yes, absolutely. So you're a college athlete. Do you think that yes. um, your time spent like on Instagram and like <clears throat> influencing and stuff like that, do you think it's like conflicted with being oh. a college athlete? Like how has that worked out for you? I 100% think that there is a really, really big conflict with that. I feel like if I weren't in college and I weren't a college athlete, I would have so much more time to devote to social media. A lot of people might not believe it, but being a social media influencer, I wouldn't consider myself a big influencer, but being an influencer is a full-time job almost. Mm -hmm. You have to dedicate a lot of time to creating content, to having time to post it, get the perfect angles, perfect shots. And um, I'm a student and an athlete before all of that, so I find myself spending more time in the classroom and out on the track more than I do um, on social media, which I mean, obviously I'd enjoy being on social media a lot more, but mm -hmm. for long-term goals of mine, I prefer being in the classroom a lot more, but there is definitely a conflict. So I do social media for my job right. too, so I know it takes up a lot of time. Oh, yes. A lot of people underestimate it, but it's, right. if like you have to manage so many different things all yes, at once and just absolutely. like content creation in itself is just, that could be a full-time yes, job, but also it takes responding a lot to messages mm -hmm. and especially if you're like working with a brand, I can right. just imagine that. Would right. be. So have you gotten any sponsors through being a college athlete or has it all just been through your like personal Instagram? Okay. So that's a question I do get a lot because a lot of my friends here at Bellarmine are athletes themselves and they're like, mm -hmm. oh, how do you get on board with this and that? I, um, on my Instagram and other social media platforms, I don't reflect that I'm an athlete as much. I don't really 
post as much of that content. But I do believe certain brands like Celsius, uh, Liquid IV, Premier Protein, you know, more of the sports-based like mm -hmm. partnerships that I have, it's they did definitely know. They like to do a good amount of research on the people they're you know yeah. recruiting to do this job. So mm -hmm. they do a pretty deep delve, and they see that I'm an athlete, and my target audience are you know college students. So. A lot of them are athletes here at Bellarmine, so I do think that it, a decent amount does come from me being a college athlete, but I would not say that a lot of it does. So are most of your partnerships that you do, are they like sponsored, you get paid for them, or do you just get free product? Or um, So a lot of the partnerships that I do right now are free product, and sometimes you have, for example, like a deliverable that you would have to do in order to make money. So I have a promo code at a couple, um, you know, partnerships that I work with and you make money based on commission and people mm -hmm. using that code so when they use that code you would get let's say five to ten percent of the purchase that they made you'll make that money back and on top of that sometimes uh, for like a story post here or a feed post here you can make extra money like a hundred dollars for a post two hundred dollars for a post certain things like that and so eventually since you already are making money once you graduate you're no longer an athlete do you want to do this as a career or What's like your ultimate goal with this? So I absolutely think that that would be really, really fun. I do want to go to medical school in the future, so mm -hmm. I don't know how much time I would have to do that. Mm -hmm. But I really feel like it would be a lot easier for me when I'm outside of uh, you know, graduate, undergrad school to be able to and do that because it honestly would be a lot easier, you know, just sharing my life and my day-to-day -day activities and, mm -hmm. you know, just pictures, things I do. That would be really, really fun for me. I really love creating content and I really love sharing a lot of my life on social media. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that'd be a quick and easy way for me to make money. So right now you're primarily on Instagram. That's yes. like your main. Yes. Um, do you want to expand into other platforms in the future? Um, I really, really would like to expand to TikTok because I feel like that's one of the largest social media uh, places for exposure. Yeah. A lot of brands use uh, TikTok now, like mm -hmm. crazy brands you would never think of are mm -hmm. on there, even when their target audience is like older people. It's not usually the young, young generation anymore. Everyone's yeah. on TikTok. Yeah. So I feel like if I were to work with brands and they wanted to promote a product, TikTok is definitely the way to go. Mm -hmm. They have millions and millions of people on there daily, um, mm -hmm. monthly, weekly. Yeah. People are on there all the time. So I feel like that's the best way to market. And I would love to expand onto TikTok, but I would like be completely transparent here. And that is not my forte. I yeah. feel like I have to learn a lot from my peers and managers on how to use it effectively. Mm -hmm. And I feel like in doing so, I could be a lot more successful. Yeah. I completely agree. TikTok is a great way to grow because right. their <clears throat> algorithm is crazy. Like you get so many followers so quickly. Absolutely. So, um, that would be a great idea. It would right. be a lot more of a time commitment probably. So, right. I mean, you'd probably have to maybe hire somebody, <laughs> right. but I think that's a good idea. Um, mm. So if you, do you have any tips for like, say a Bellarmine student also wanted to like start their own Instagram page, right. eventually like become an influencer. Do you have any tips for them on like how to get there? Oh, for sure. I 100% think that anyone could do it. It doesn't matter about how many friends you have in real life or how many followers you have. All those things really don't matter at the end of the day. It's how authentic you are to yourself, your brand and what you represent. And if you really feel passionate about something or something that you enjoy doing yourself, anything, I think that you should 100% go out on the limb and put your assets that you have out there for someone else to use or help out someone, even if you're just posting inspirational things, like you could help so many people on social media by just being out there. So I think that for anyone who wants to be an influencer or wants to learn how to make money on social media and they're nervous, I think you should 100% go for it. The worst that can happen is it doesn't work out. And even if it doesn't, I'm sure that if you keep working, you put in effort, you can do it. That's great advice. Thank you so much of for coming on. I loved interviewing you. And of I can't course, wait to see great. how you grow in the future. Yes. Thanks so much for joining me on another edition of Hanging with Hannah at BU. Tune in next week on Thursday morning because I'll be interviewing a professor about something you might not know about him. Thanks for watching.